In this section, we want to look at trigonometric form for complex numbers. Now, in the diagram that I've written over here, if we have the complex number a plus bi, that's in standard form or algebraic form, the graph is a vector that goes from the origin out to the point ab. So the graph of any complex number a plus bi is a vector from the origin out to the point ab, where the coordinates of a and b are the real and the imaginary parts of the complex number. Now, if you look at this diagram right here, sine theta is equal to b divided by r, if r is the length of this vector right here, the distance from the origin out to the point a, b. Cosine theta is equal to a over r. That means that b is r sine theta and a is r cosine theta. So we can take z, our complex number, which is a plus b i, and write it as r cosine theta plus i r times the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta because a is going to be equal to r cosine theta, b times i is r sine theta times i. I can factor that r outside and get cosine theta plus i sine theta inside the parentheses. So this form right here, this is called trigonometric form for the complex number a plus bi. Standard form or algebraic form here and trigonometric form here. Now I call r the modulus of the complex number or its absolute value, square root a squared plus b squared, and it's the length of this vector right here. Theta is called the argument of the complex number, and it's the angle between the positive x-axis and theta, or the, the, yeah, it's the angle between the positive x-axis and theta measured in a, a counterclockwise direction like this. So all we want to do in this section is look at um, how to go back and forth between algebraic form and trigonometric form for complex numbers. So first, let's look at a couple of complex numbers in trigonometric form and see if we can write them in standard form. So problem one, it says write in standard form, I have two cosine 30 degrees plus I sine 30 degrees. Now, if I wanted to draw a little picture that would, so we could see what this complex number looked like, just take my coordinate system, and the modulus is two, so this is a vector that has a length of two, and is 30 degrees up from the positive x-axis. So if I was to draw this vector in right here, where this is 30 degrees, and this length right here is 2, that's my complex number. That's a graph of that complex number, and this point AB, its coordinates will, are what I get if I put this complex number into algebraic form. Now, let's just write it. Cosine 30 degrees is square root 3 over 2, plus i times the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Now, if I multiply through by 2, here I get square root 3, multiply by, through by 2 right here, and I just get i. So square root 3 plus i is this complex number 2, cosine 30 plus i sine 30 in algebraic or standard form. The graph of it is going to look like this, whether I look at it in trigonometric form like this, where this is the distance from the origin out to the point that's this many degrees up from the positive x-axis, or whether I look at it as the vector that goes from the origin out to the point square root 3 and 1. So this ordered pair AB that I wrote right there would be square root 3 and 1. Let's look at our second example. Cosine 210 plus I sine 210. Now the modulus for this complex number in trigonometric form would just be the number 1. So if, again, if I wanted to draw a little picture of this, this would be a vector 1 unit long that's 210 degrees from the positive x-axis. So if I wrote in here an angle of, let's say, 210 degrees, which would be 30 degrees, past 180 right here, and I made this vector exactly one unit long, then this is a, this is the graph of that complex number. Now what I need is the point AB, so I can write this in, in trigonometric form as A plus BI. So I'll just do that. Cosine of 210 in quadrant number 3, cosine and sine are both negative, so that's negative. Square root 3 over 2 plus i times sine of 210, the reference angle is 30, so it's going to be 1 half in quadrant 3 is negative 1 half. So I end up with this complex number, negative square root 3 over 2 minus 1 half times i. So that's what this complex number looks like in standard form or algebraic form right here. And the, the coordinates of this point a, b would be negative square root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. So generally, going from trigonometric form to algebraic form is really a pretty simple process. I simply evaluate the trigonometric 
uh, cosine and sine of this argument angle right here, and then just multiply if there's a number out in front. What I'm left with is my complex number in algebraic form. Now, in the next three problems, what we want to do is go back in the other direction and go from algebraic form to trigonometric form. So here's our first problem. Negative 1 plus i. Again, let's draw a little picture so we can see what the graph of this complex number looks like. It'll be the, comp it'll be the vector that goes from the origin out to the point x equal negative 1, y equal 1. So x equal negative 1, y equal 1. I'll put that point right here. And that's my vector. So I know then that this is going to be 135 degrees. And if this is one unit and this is one unit, the length of that vector is square root 2. So in trigonometric form, this must be square root 2 cosine 135 plus i sine 135. Now, would that make sense? Cosine 135, uh, 1 over square root 2, sine 135, or cosine 135 is negative 1 over square root 2. This is positive 1 over square root 2. When I multiply by square root 2, I'm going to get negative 1 plus i. Now, what if we didn't know, though, that from this diagram, see, I can just look at this diagram and see that this is 135 degrees. What if I didn't know that? Then I would go back to my formulas and I would say, at this point, that um, a is equal to negative 1, b is equal to positive 1, so my modulus r I would find first as square root of a squared plus b squared. That's the formula from my first sheet that I wrote up there. It's really just the length of the vector or the magnitude of this complex number. So or what I call modulus of the complex number, that's 1 squared plus 1 squared. That's square root 2. Then I would say, well, cosine of the argument, cosine of theta is a over r, and uh, sine of theta is b over r. Well, a is equal to negative 1, and r is square root 2. b is equal to 1, and r is square root 2. So I'd have to ask myself, what angle theta has a sine of negative 1 over square root 2, cosine of negative 1 over square root 2, and a sine of positive 1 over square root 2? These together imply that theta is equal to 135 degrees. So I would get both r and theta using algebra like this and from, from simply applying those formulas that I have. r is square root of a squared plus b squared. Cosine theta is a over r. Sine theta is b over r. Substituting the values in after I calculate what r is, and that will tell you what angle theta is. But in this case, I could also just look at the diagram and see. Here's another problem. How about 8i? Well, the graph of 8i, this looks like 0 plus 8i if I put it in standard form. So a picture of this, if I want to sketch the graph of this complex number, I would go from the origin out to the point 0, 8. So x equals 0, y equals 8. That's this point right here. This vector is the graph of that complex number. Its length is 8, and it's exactly 90 degrees up from the positive x-axis. So if I want to write this in trigonometric form, the length of the vector is 8. That's what I call the modulus of the complex number. And then it's cosine of 90 plus i times the sine of 90. That's this complex number in trigonometric form. Now, if you want to check real quick just to see, how about 8 times cosine of 90 degrees? Well, the cosine of 90 degrees, this is 8 times 0 plus sine of 90 degrees is 1. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times i times 1 is 8i. So see, I can get my complex number in algebraic form right back just by simply doing this multiplication after I evaluate sine and cosine of 90 degrees. Let's look at one last example. Negative 9, negative 9 looks like, in standard form, negative 9 plus 0i. So if I was to draw the graph of this, I would go from the origin out to the point negative 9, 0. So let's draw coordinate system in real quick. If I go from the origin out to the point negative 9, 0, that's this vector right here. Its length, of course, is 9. And the number of degrees it is from the positive x-axis is 180. So this is going to be, in trigonometric form, 
9 times cosine 180 plus i sine 180. So that's my complex number in trigonometric form. So the number negative 9 is a real number. It's a complex number, negative 9 plus 0i in, in uh, standard form. And it also can be written as 9 times cosine 180 plus i sine 180. And that's this number, negative 9, in trigonometric form. So a lot of different ways to look at the same number. Now, it turns out that there's um, some good things about having uh, complex numbers in trigonometric form that we're going to see in the nec next two sections that we cover.